today is Sunday and I'm going to finally do some sewing that has needed to be done for a few years. It's a beautiful day outside and I'm up inside the very top of the house that's called the cupola. And in this house, it's basically a small, tiny little room that um, has a built-in table and it's open to the second floor downstairs and it's surrounded by these absolutely beautiful windows, uh, probably the majority of the way around. And um, so I'm up here with a great view and I'm going to do some sewing. For those of, the, of you that are curious, here's just a shot of my cupola. Uh, it's a computer room for the kids and it's also a collect-all for the things that are probably in the future going to into our master bedroom which is not finished. Here is the built-in table which is perfect for sewing. I have my fabric laid out ready to be cut. It's built into the structure of the house um, so they just kind of put a table on top which is very cool. I know the original owners used it as a desk. My little sewing table and some more sewing junk and a lot more collection of things that um, need to be put in the original place. But everything has, every room has this amazing view. And there's the mustard seed cabin. Out in these beautiful windows. And um, I love this. And then also we have, that's a view down into the kitchen. And a view down to the second floor. Into the living space down there, which is now the dining room. So this is and, and the, well, the hallway circles around this whole cupola and um, right directly underneath the cupola is the second floor bathroom. So there's this wonderful space that I get to enjoy sewing in. We have these chairs that we have had for 13 years since we moved from Florida to Ohio and uh, gradually one by one the canvas that holds that you sit in has ripped. And um, since moving here, these chairs have gotten a lot more use and we now have none of these chairs functioning. So my job today is to finally fix these chairs. I'm gonna replace the canvas in them so we'll have three more chairs to sit in in this house. Here is the only remaining chair that's somewhat together. And um, I have removed the canvas off of the other two and I will use that as the pattern for the new the new ones, the new chairs. So here I am at my table and I have laid out my the old uh, cover to the, the old canvas that went on those little sling chairs. This one is still black. The other two are no longer black because they actually lasted longer than this one and sat on our porch when we were in Ohio and it was they were favorite chairs for us to sit in and that's why they've been worn so much. But I removed this from the frame, and from what I can tell, it's actually one solid piece of canvas that has a little bit of stuffing and uh, foam here that I will remove gently and use, just reuse the same foam in the new sling that I, that I make. And so I'm just gonna use this pattern and I'm gonna cut it out. I'm gonna cut three pieces out of my nice maroon color fabric. And then all I have to do is sew on this little edging here, which I also have. Now I just want to say a little side note here that I learned how to sew from the best person possible, my mother. She's been sewing since she was a tiny little thing and has done it professionally for years and years and years. In fact, she supported our family for many of those years by sewing. And so she can do anything. I have seen her do everything. Nothing has stumped her at all. And she has taught me a ton of tricks of the trade. I'm certainly not good enough to be a professional seamstress, but I know how to make a few things. I know how to look at a problem, figure it out, and have a solution to do it. I know how to make patterns. I know how to uh, sew from patterns. I know how to... I reupholstered a chair. My daughter and I reupholstered a chair a year ago because my mom had taught me some fundamental shortcuts and some good information that I was able to just use my prior knowledge and figure it out in the process. The chair turned out great. So really it's that foundation, it's that knowledge is what I'm, grow I'm going on here today the basic information of what my mom has taught me. I've never done this before. I've never actually reupholstered. I've never sewn with canvas. I've never reupholstered a sling chair before. This is not something I do on a regular basis, but I have confidence that I can do it because my mom taught me really what I'm doing. And um, I, I'm so grateful for that. 
So if you have someone out there who has taught you a gift like knitting or sewing or any kind of craft that we tend to are we're losing so much of these days, um, thank them for it because it is a gift they've passed on to you. Okay, I have it all pinned down and I'm going to start cutting. Having sharp scissors is important. The hardest part about having sharp, sharp, uh, sharp scissors is keeping them away from the kids. They love to cut paper with these and it ruins them immediately. Okay, I'm done cutting and I did cut a double, uh, a double thickness so I have two of the chairs already cut out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my pen, my pins here, and I'm going to mark, just stick one here at the top, because knowing that this is the top part of, of, the, um, of the sling, this is where the head goes, just so that I, I, I know that, because I do notice that they are a little narrower on the bottom as they are on top, so just, that's how I'm just marking it. Okay, so I have removed the, the foam off of the old canvas. And I have attached it, just pinning, pinned it here in place. And now I have my cordage that I'm going to add to the, the edges. And um, I'm just, it's, it's really simple. This cordage is really nice. It doesn't require any hemming. And so I'm just going to wrap it around the bare edges of the canvas, making sure that I incorporate the, the uh, foam into the process of the pinning. And then I'll start sewing. Okay, this is my sewing machine. It's an oldie but a goodie. When we were uh, relatively early on in our marriage, uh, I, we bought a, mas a machine for me that was the best that we could afford at the time and I used it for years and years. I sewed on it, made children's clothes, made stockings, made crafts, made curtains, made everything I needed using that machine. And then about two years ago, my mom gave this machine to me. Now, it's, I remember her sewing on this machine when I was a little girl and so it has a sentimental value to me, but it is such a great machine. It's old, but it works so much better than the newer one I've used forever. It's amazing how different a good quality machine works. And I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure, sure that's with any tool that we use, right? You get what you pay for, a better tool tends to work better than the cheaper ones. And so um, this is it. This is my, it's an old, I love it. And I'm excited. I'm so grateful for my mom's giving it to me. Okay, I've started sewing, and uh, so far it's going pretty well. I made sure I got extra heavy thread because this is pretty thick material, and then um, so far my needle's holding up. I may have to get a heavy duty needle, needle if that's what's not in the, in the machine. So far, so good. I really like sewing on upholstery material. Uh, it's just thick and solid and it doesn't like bunch up and and get stuck in the machine and then when you iron it it, it creases and stays in place. I just have always preferred using upholstery material even when I make curtains because it's just a better quality fabric and it's just easier to sew with. I spoke too soon. After I said, so far so good, my needle fell out. It didn't break at least though, it just fell out for some reason. So now I have to get it back in there and tighten it back down. Keep going. Okay, I finished this piece. I finished sewing the cording around. My concern was in the corners, I was afraid that they um, were not gonna work right, but um, I think for the most part they, they turned out okay. I will go through and hand sew a couple spots that where uh, the my line of thread missed the cordage or whatnot, just to make sure that it's not going to tear, tear apart. Now, the next step is I'm going to um, fold over this flap right here and throw one stitch going across here to hold it together, and then the bar of the chair will slip into this little pot spot. So I need to find out how big to make this, and then sew that on, and I'm pretty much done. So I finished the, uh, the sewing here. I have my little loopy loops made here so that the, the bar of the chair can slip through. All I'm doing now is hand sewing the corners 
because uh, the thickness there made it difficult for my machine to do it and I just wanted to give some extra reinforcement to the corners so that they don't rip apart from the weight of our bodies sitting in the chair. So hand sewing at the end and then I should be done. I'll just have to uh, fix the chair and assemble it. Okay, so I have this done. And what I've done is I've removed a screw on this side and then down here in the bottom and I'm just going to slip this in to place. And there you go. And then all I have to do is reattach the screws and I should have a finished product here. My finished chair. The fabric's a little wrinkly, but it's done and it looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. This chair hasn't been used in years and years because the fabric was torn and now we can use it again. This is Linda from Happy Place Homestead. I have one of these chairs finished, two more to go. Thanks for watching.